So it could not be any more rainy here in Austin. It has been weeks of pouring down rain and it is so gloomy outside. Um, but I am so happy today because we are uh, releasing the video that I did with Courtney and Jacob of DJ Jacob Co. And I love them. We laughed so hard uh, while we were in Dallas just a, about a month ago. And I sat down and heard their story about how they've built their business, they've kept it lean, and they've chosen to the difficult way, and they travel around with their two girls all across the US uh, helping and loving on couples as well as producing incredible experiences. So they are not only uh, providing DJ services and music, but they also do lighting, they do scent and smell and fragrance, uh, and a lot of other details. And as a DJ company and a wedding company, they have a partnership with a rosé company, which is amazing. So we sat down over rosé, and I can't wait for you to hear a little bit of insight about their perspective, how they juggle it all, um, what their story was, and kind of uh, kind of thinking outside the box in terms of what you think of as a traditional DJ service. <laughs> Like we normally do, I know. <laughs> which is pretty fantastic. Yeah. I love having friends that I, oh, I should drink. Mm. Someone said that was rude once when it I is. started talking and I didn't drink Something about after eye the cheers. And... We're not gonna judge you. Well, Jacob <laughs> took a sip of it during his toast last night to Susie, so I mean, apparently I was, that's I was a no no too. The so. Klimt, and I was like, I have to, I, <laughs> I need feel, a sip I need a refreshment. To be able to speak. Yes. Um, no, I love meeting my friends all over the world. I feel like it's so fun. Like, I don't have time at home, so I no. actually see all of you more than I see. Yeah people in Austin. Yeah. I see like four Plus times cool. a year, which I don't even see the people No, I feel like we see each other more than four times a year. That's yeah, probably. True. In different cities. It's probably a handful. Well, even the rest of this year, we were saying, we were like, well, there's the gala, and then there's Cabo. Like, it's true. And we have only a few months left in the year. That's so pretty good. It's the of our job. It's a pretty fun industry. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think you can really compare, to, compare it to anything. No, it's really. hard to explain, like when we meet uh, normal people, <laughs> and like, so what do you do for a living? I'm just like, um... I um, go to par I, I put on parties, I go to parties. Yeah. I Party dance at parties. I travel I all over the country. I yeah. try to not go into it too much. Um, so I think <laughs> it's fuzzy, but I want to talk about where you guys came from. I think you're a powerhouse of a DJ in the U.S. and internationally, really, um, which is a big feat to accomplish. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in weddings, yeah, it's not. Because when you try to explain to someone that you actually travel as a wedding DJ, they're like, that's not a thing. I'm like, it, you're right, it's not a thing. <laughs> I it's made not it normal. <laughs> well, there's very few of you, for sure. Yeah, yeah. very For sure, few. for sure. Well, yeah. traveling, doing lighting, there's not many of those True. either. Because it's pretty rare. so much to haul, typically, but we like to kind of turn things on their head and make it so that creating but you're creating an experience yeah. as part of that that's the key and like those service touch points are huge yes yeah. very catered to the couple and to their individual look and exactly what they're looking for and we're always looking for new ways to add the experience like Jacqueline who you've interviewed before the first thing she said to me today was she was like oh, I forgot you guys were coming I would have had you bring the scent like she's all yeah. excited because we <laughs> well the sense of me scent yeah. experiences yeah. too like I've been trying to talk planners into letting us do that yes. for a while so that's amazing. Because it'd be nice, especially with the trees. That's diverging from your question. But. But you, like how we got started originally was I was playing music at a Starbucks. Uh, I worked for Starbucks to play music. He was okay. an amazing guitar player as well. But I started playing guitar to uh, meet girls and <laughs> it worked. Good. And I'm so, I, so I, glad it worked I out on the first time too. <laughs> I haven't played since. <laughs> Uh, it would come back naturally. Yeah. Ish. And we uh, we were just kind of doing our own thing for like a year or two when we first got married uh, with work. And then we went, got invited to a wedding. And I was like, great. This is the first wedding I've ever been to with a DJ. I was just kind of cool. I'm excited. And it was horrible. I was like, I had no <laughs> idea. Like, the DJ experience was that bad. And everyone was looking around like this. We've is, all been there. And you're just that. like... I didn't know that was Should a thing. Should I say something? Should I give him suggestions? Is that too much? Is I that did. not enough? Like, I how involved I should I be to turn this, life, this night around? I was so confused. He was like, no, it's, it does make sense to play the YMCA three times. I'm like, no. In you a should row. stop doing that. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's kind of where I realized, like, there's definitely a need in the market. And then Courtney was uh, finishing her degree at the time, and she came 
home from college and was like, hey, um, you can just become a DJ. Like, here's a company to call. I was like, great. So I, I did. I called and started. And I was like, hey, I have a sound engineering background. I want to do this. We had plenty of disposable cash. So I just kind of invested into the company right away uh, and got, like, the best equipment I could. And Got to get the toolbox yeah, right. Yeah, made a lot of mistakes, mm -hmm. like, That's under someone else's out. company, which is cool. <laughs> And then, yeah, we did a really amazing wedding and got published. Uh, and then we got fired from the company because we got published. And they kind of pushed us into like, okay, am I going to do this? Or am I just going to like play at this? And so I went out on my own, started my own business. You know. And at that time, were you working? Yes. Yes. I was okay. a teacher. When, from English teaching, I don't even know what all happened after that. Yeah, I mean, I was an English teacher, but I'd always wanted to do design, and so I actually left like be more creative, yeah, and, to mm -hmm. do design. That's what originally, like, I had gone to school for and things like that. And just kind of fell into an English degree somehow, as things go. <laughs> and she actually got wedding planning certified. So yeah, I'm a wedding planner. You know a, the inside as a outside company. of the industry. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. good. So That's pretty good. We're certified. <laughs> I worked for an interior design firm and a wedding planning and floral design company. She came on full time, quit right her job. Away. And we just did this full time. And then our kids were still in elementary school um, and we were trying to do weddings on the weekend and have the kids uh, and then traveling. It was like, that was insane. So then we decided to homeschool them um, so they could travel with us, uh -huh. which is really cool. Which, did you start your career as like de like destination? No. Or did it just evolve naturally? It evolved. How we kind of started traveling is we got connected uh, went to a conference, got connected with other planners in other cities, mm -hmm. and they were like, wait a second, you're like a DJ who isn't really weird. I was like, yeah, I know, they're all very bizarre. I get it. <laughs> I understand. And it was also doing the environmental projection at an attainable level where clients didn't have to spend, say, $50,000 to have something like that that yeah. can transform their space, and because you don't necessarily need this level of environmental projection for a wedding. You just want, like, a, a little beautiful background. Yeah, a just right. a little, a sprinkle. Uh, yeah. So that was a I mean, I think just even with traveling. the DJ putting, like, a one light behind him, like, let's just get basic. Oh like, gosh. just add one light. Just like, do something, yeah. Pay for it yourself. Like, it looks good in photos. Right, and it yeah. makes you feel like a badass. Like, that's... Yeah. Do it. <laughs> It's it's because we wanted the immersive, like the whole room to change with every song. The experience. The, ex the full experience, and that's what we've been keen on from the beginning: is how can I create an ex experience in a way to where it's a small footprint with a large impact. So I'm not setting up huge trusts around the room, huge speakers around the room, huge lights around the room. It's stuff that you don't even really notice. Just the whole room's kind of like moving and changing and. Like, it just creates this ambiance. Mm -hmm. It just feels, oh, this should always be like this. Which and your your brand is, though, DJ Jacob Co. Like, that, mm -hmm. that is the yeah. brand. Luxury and, DJ yes. lighting design. Exactly. And so, so she's the co. is that, like, the tagline? Like, is that what you guys yeah. use so that you're, like, mm -hmm. educating and putting it out there? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's luxury. And we actually really drew from the insight from the Ritz and from the Four Seasons of what luxury really is. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's well, not, a lot of it's customer service. It's, it's not you, just... It's the way you treat people. Yes, It's absolutely. not like, I've spent this amount of money. It's, I'm getting this quality of treatment. Mm -hmm. So, irregardless of, like, where our clients are at, we treat all of them at the same level because it's it's their special day. Like, they deserve to be treated that way. And so that's what we feel is the luxury experience that we provide amongst... Many but I think luxury things, is but. also a part of your brand. Yeah. yeah like, it, you guys have a very luxurious... I mean, you know, there's a lifestyle that comes with it, too. <laughs> Correct. It's not about, like, making sure that there's a certain price point. Like, like we're here at the Four Seasons right now. If someone walks through the front door, no matter which room they have in the hotel, they get the exact same experience. True. And they walk in. True. They feel loved. Mm -hmm. They feel like they've gotten a good experience. And that's what we want all of our clients. No matter if it's a million-dollar wedding or if it's an elopement, like, we mm -hmm. want to make sure, like, it's... You know, if they come to us, we're invested in them long term, and we we love our couples. Yeah. Like we, we like to watch them, you know, have kids and grow up and like enjoy each other. So we we want to be invested long term. So. And that's one of the things that we love so much about getting to be a couple working together in the industry. Like as our roles mm -hmm. change within the company and things like that, 
it's always been really important to us to love on our couples, which is something that Jacob can't do as much on his own <laughs> yes. as a male DJ. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's but, where the creepy line yeah. Yeah. gets, yeah. gets crossed. Crazy. I love you. Like, okay. Mm. But, okay. like, for us, we get this opportunity to, like, pour into these couples yeah. as they're getting ready to get married and they're they want that information like we've been married for 12 years oh well how have you been happily married for 12 years like that's something to that's celebrate that's really unusual you know, you know? So. it is that's yeah. true so you said the word roles so I'm curious about your journey of finding your place I, I mean you both have very different personalities yeah. that are very complimentary um, but I guess was that ever was that difficult for you guys to like pave the path of like how and what that looks like or was it right away like no, it actually, yeah. it was a, it was definitely a journey, especially getting thrown into it. Like yeah. we kind of talked about, like Jacob just needed me all of a sudden. There, yeah. And so I had to shift from what I was doing that I loved so much to coming in and like, how do I find my niche in our company now, but also his company, like he's the face, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. And so I think... She can't just push cases around, you know, it's like, yeah. it's not a thing. So with her background, especially with being... Your skill set. Like an yeah. English major, it's like she has to be able to run the business that's part of it because of how good she is at that uh i'm not good at that so but that was something we had to kind of work through and you're the out hook. and be okay she with seals that. the deal she seals the deal <laughs> i usually just hand the phone over to her yeah. because she knows how to she knows how to work through that stuff she knows the details so much yeah. better than i do yeah. and do you guys have boundaries in your personal life with when you don't and don't talk do and don't talk about work is that a thing, or is it like it's, so much a part of your lifestyle? It's not really a thing too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we we go through times where like we'll definitely like not talk about business, and then we just get excited about stuff. I think that's something that people say, and I think it's something that you can really easily feel guilty about, especially when yeah. like this is our it's our I mean it's our life. It is your life, you know. Yeah. And so I think you can start to feel this guilt, like well we don't have this delineation. We go on date nights, and maybe we talk about work. Like we do. that's not necessarily a bad thing because mm-hmm. we love. What like, give yourself do. a little grace, you know? Yeah. It's fun. We yeah. enjoy it. So it's one of those things where, like, hey, we're talking about yeah. this party in, in Maui or whatever. And so we get excited. We have to plan this stuff and experience and figure out, like, how are we going to do it? But that is our life. So yeah. that's what we love to do. So you travel around with your two young girls. Yeah, so we and try to take our kids with this. I feel like, I mean, I was, I don't know, I was homeschooled, did you not? I didn't know mm-hmm. that. Yeah, I knew that since third grade. I was not homeschooled. Um, and I think it is, I mean, you guys have provided and created, you've created this lifestyle for yourself and created this yeah. niche in the industry to travel and, like, be this on-the-go family. And you have your two girls, 10 and 12, who are in the room in four-season robes, mind mm-hmm. you, drinking yeah. tea and watching cable. They live... Lovely. Pretty bougie yeah. life. Yeah. They don't realize that, but it's like you got it really good. It's, yeah, pretty decent. Yeah, I'm, many children would love for that. So like, just, so like, how do, how have you figured out how to make this happen? Like, what's in your not even toolkit, but like, how do you? But yeah, so trying to figure out a way to, I've, I've always been passionate about if if I'm going to grow the business, I want it to be more inclusive with my family. Mm-hmm. So as it grows, how can I see them more, not less? Yeah. And so taking on more and more people would be, mean I would be stretched more thin. So I, I or stretched thinner. So I really want them to be there and involved. So we limit it to just us. So by doing that, my family's always with me. So when I can, I fill them in. So we're able to do that by when we have a tour bus. So when we have weddings in California. That's fantastic. It's not just like a annual. Us. Like it's not like a, it's like a home on wheels, like premium. Female. Yeah, <laughs> it's our it's our Mercedes Airstream Sprinter van, which is great because the girls can travel with us. They can we can go to the Grand Canyon and the next day go to an event and the next day you know climb mountains in Utah. Yeah. It's just like that's and that's what they're booked, used to. We, I mean, we get booked for a wedding in California and we turn it into a cross country. Yeah, why wouldn't you? It's, mm-hmm. it's awesome. I mean, yeah. we love that we get to share these amazing experiences that we get to have with our kids mm-hmm. which for us it's and they're like, at such a wonderful age to like be immersed in it yeah. yeah and they love it and they're getting such a better education in our opinion than maybe they would be getting otherwise and like why do we do this unless we get to really share it with them right so well you mentioned uh obviously keeping things small and i want to touch on that a little bit so 
obviously, I think a lot of business owners get to the point of, do I grow or do I stay niche? And which is a huge, yeah. I mean, it, it's still something every day. I'm like, do I want more people? No. Yeah. Like, <laughs> We've fought yes. to I, stay I, small. But I also feel like there's an expectation of you're not successful unless you're adding people yeah. and you're, which, I, which is not success. Success is what you have defined, which is like having the freedom and having the exactly. flexibility and having yeah. the family time. Family and time. It, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So how have you been on the journey of your pricing? to make sure that that happens. So, and obviously yeah. you have strong relationships with your planners. How has that transition been when you've continued to level up, level up, level up alongside yeah. these partnerships? So it's not about like how many weddings we can accomplish in a year. I got only 300 weddings in a year. To me, that's no pointless. No one wants to do that. Nobody wants to do that. So, you know, what we want is we want, we want to commit to particular couples throughout the year that feel like that we can really make their wedding amazing. And so by committing like, we don't just, it's not just me showing up and doing the wedding, like our whole family commits to that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so creating a lifestyle around the weddings, I can, when I show up, like I'm, I'm all in. Mm -hmm. I'm 100% invested in making this wedding amazing because I only do one, maybe two weddings in a weekend. Um, and when I'm there, my, my attention, my focus and everything is for this couple. And so by creating a, a pricing strategy to where, okay, well, how much do we need to make to grow our business, to be successful, but not be gouging our clients. Like make it to where we can add more value mm -hmm. as opposed to just mm -hmm. adding more price. Mm -hmm. So we get our price to where we can just, you know, put everything as much as we can into whatever client, whatever they're at, uh, is as best we can. And by doing that, it get, makes it to where they can just relax and enjoy the event as opposed to just constantly talking about pricing we're talking about design yeah right yeah. and flow and the music and stuff like that do you have a productivity each of you a productivity hack either an app a book like something that's like you're like this is like changes my day-to-day -day life i'll let you speak on that because i know you're big on that so yeah um Give i think for me because stuff. i'm doing a lot of the day-to-day -day, you know i think for me it's finding giving myself balance so okay. that I don't just end up sitting in front of the computer all day long like this so that when Jacob or the girls come to me, I'm like, oh, I have sending emails. <laughs> <laughs> or and whatever. Yeah, or whatever. So I think it's, I mean, it's kind of a hack is that like, I try to set aside time like for myself, especially in the morning. Like, so I get up and I have my time and like I read my book or whatever's inspiring me at the moment, you know, and then I have that time. Mm -hmm. And then I do some work and I check in with the girls' school and stuff like that, and then I go work out, and then I come back. So it's like having those refresher moments mm -hmm. where you're technically spending less time working, but you're so much more productive working. than uh -huh. if you're just like, work, 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 mm -hmm. work, 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 work. So I was a good reminder. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just easy too, especially when you're like, I mean, obviously as entrepreneurs, like if we're not cranking it, yeah. business isn't coming in. Yeah. And sometimes it's easy to like, just get into like a, yeah. Chink, 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 and then you're like, I'm not even do like I'm making spelling errors. I'm not like yeah. like give yourself a break. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am curious to hear a little bit more about mm. this new relationship you have in here. Oh yeah. So we. <laughs> so there's there's this, which is enjoyable and lovely. All of the many amazing perks that we get, like getting to be here with the knot. Getting here at the knot, getting connected with the Four Seasons, like the one in Orlando. Yeah. Getting connected with uh, a company, a rosé company, Notorious Pink. So we started partnering with them, uh, sharing their products with our clients. They're actually sponsoring our party that we're hosting uh, with the knot for the after party, which after the amazing. gala, yeah. which is kind of cool. So they've got all kinds of really fun things up their sleeves. So we've also been able to kind of come alongside them because they're a smaller company that makes amazing, amazing rosé and their branding is on point and things like that. But they're not really in our side of the industry. Mm -hmm. On the wedding so, side. It was like, yeah. you need to come to the wedding. Well, and just the gift, yeah. the, the, the concept of gifting and things like that is new to mm -hmm. them. So we've been able to kind of like speak into that. Awesome. Well, this has been so lovely. So Thank fun. you for sitting down with me in Dallas. Thank you. It's been a fun day. Oh, your last workshop. Always. And I think we're going out big with the bang. Hey, yeah. Another pretty light thing. Yeah. Great. Oh. Thank you. Love you. fun night. Um, I want people to find you online, of course. Follow you, comment, ask you questions. Yeah. So where can they find you on social and on your website? So I'll do social. Let me, okay. uh, DJ Jacob Co. on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. Or Pinterest. Or Pinterest. Co as in C-O. C-O, yeah. correct. Yep. 
And then website? Is www.djjacobco.com. And then uh, let's talk rosé. Yeah, what so is the name of the brand? Our, our sponsor is Notorious Pink uh, Rosé. And we'll put a link on comments. And the show notes. We'll put, and put the show notes. probably right here. Right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so check it out. pick some up and try it too. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yep. It's, um,